This week we are going to be talking with sea levels expert Niels Axel Morner about draconian policy which is destroying coastal communities on the back of projections which are basically lies. The example we will be using is the village of Fairbourne in North West Wales. The references for the quotes are from local national newspapers and the BBC. Sea defences protecting coastal homes in a Gwynedd village in North West Wales will be maintained for 40 more years, residents have been told. Fairbourne was expected to enter into managed retreat in 2025 due to the cost of maintaining defences. Villagers claim their homes have since been devalued or remained empty. The defences managed by Natural Resources Wales currently protect about 500 properties. Councillor John Wynne, cabinet member for the environment, said the council would work with residents to find solutions which were acceptable to the community. This is change agent speak for there will be no input from the public, just the appearance of it. Go to our article Big Society Change Agents on windowsontheworld.net for more information on how the narrative is being controlled by your local authority. Now sources state about 50 communities across Wales are at risk from rising sea levels. Here's the BBC story. Coastal communities in Wales face being abandoned as rising sea levels mean the cost of maintaining defences can no longer be justified, BBC Wales can reveal. A 2010 report found 135 million must be spent annually on defences by 2035 just to maintain the current level of risk. Well, this is nonsensical, and note that this is all just fear-mongering based on a projection. Check out our article, Climate Change, No Rising Sea Levels for 70 Years. The paper referred to in the article is entitled, Discussion of Coastal Planning Should Be Based on Proven Sea Level Data. Now, that's something the BBC could do with getting hold of. Now, despite there being no evidence, councils across Wales are now planning for this managed retreat. Natural Resources Minister Alan Davis said it was not currently part of Welsh Government policy. Now all of this goes back to earlier this year. But BBC Wales week in week out has found local authorities around Wales are already making preparations. Fairbourne and Gwynedd is expected to enter into managed retreat in 2025. It is one of around 50 communities listed as being in such areas in the next 45 years. This is part of a massive depopulation programme of the countryside. Now more than 400 homes are expected to be abandoned in the village by 2055 as part of that policy. The advice to retreat from some communities comes from shoreline management plans or SMPs which draw up a future strategy based on the state of existing defences, the economic importance of the area and the information on sea level rises. So what they're doing here is they're basically saying these villages are unsustainable both financially and the infrastructure. That's really what they're doing. It's all part of this Agenda 21 or Agenda 2030 that no one's heard about, but we've been talking about for many years. It carries on. Flood consultant Mary Donu calls for a halt to floodplain home building and agrees with withdrawal from coastal areas where sea levels are rising. Again, she's not an expert. So, Gwynedd Council adopted its SMP, Shoreline Management, last year and has accepted that in the long term it cannot continue to defend Fairbourne. So, this policy has just come into local government and they're now being told that they have to do this. So, it's nothing to do with Gwynedd Council. It's coming from much higher up. The plan is trying to sustain the position in the short term, but in the longer term we will have to have that managed retreat, Gwynedd Council leader Dovid Edwards said. These people really need to be made accountable for what they're saying here. Mike Phillips, Professor of Coastal Geomorphology at University of Wales, Trinity St David, said science was against low-lying villages such as Fairbourne, with a change agent comment. He says, sea levels are rising. It means the cost of defending this place will be too high, he said. He says, as a coastal scientist, I think it is right to consider managed retreat as an option because we cannot afford to continually defend our coastline. A 2010 report by Natural Resources Wales, this predecessor body of Environment Agency Wales, found 135 million needed to be spent annually on flood and coastal defences by 2035 just to maintain the current level of risk. Again, there's no evidence to back up their claims of this risk. 
the community has formed the Fairborn Facing Change Community Action Group to identify the issues it wants to see addressed and to explore how they can be dealt with. Residents have also written to First Minister Carwin Jones outlining their opposition and say they are looking to launch a legal challenge. Well, this is where today's show comes in because launching a legal challenge against that would be very interesting. The spokesman for the council said it had communicated the plans through community councils and meetings held recently were the first step in raising awareness of the consequences of coastal changes locally. Quote, rather than ignore the inevitable, the shoreline management plan for the West of Wales focuses in detail on how these changes will affect coastal communities along the 180 mile of the county's coastline, the spokesman said. Now that the work of presenting the SNP document to the community and town councils across Gwynedd has been completed, the next stage will focus on presenting information to the wider community. A community newsletter will be sent out and three public meetings to discuss the plans will be held later this year, he added. So what we've got here is the council controlling the narrative. The community meetings will be held using something called Delphi technique, which is used in all public meetings. And you need to look that up. It's the way that public meetings are controlled by a facilitator to an intended outcome. The important thing is here that people will not be given a choice, so they have to fight back against this. On today's show, we have Niels Axel Morner, a world expert on sea levels to counter the alarmism being propagated for this UN global governance and control of population known as Agenda 2030, previously known as Agenda 21 or Sustainable Development. Welcome, Niels. Thank you very much. Thank yes. you. I'm just going to read out what it says here about this alarmist claim about this village. Um, it's, this is from a newspaper article. It says, Welsh village to sue government over alarmist rising sea level claim. A Welsh village is to sue the government after a climate change report suggested their community would soon be washed away by rising sea levels. The document says Fairborn will soon be lost to the sea and recommends that, is, that it is decommissioned. Angry villagers say predictions that the sea level will rise by a metre a year are alarmist and have hit house prices and investment in the village. So the people there are basically going to try and challenge what is being said legally. So Niels, you've looked at this article. What do you think yeah. about it? I mean, the people here are completely correct. And those planners, the shoreline management plans, is completely uh, wrong and uh, misguiding. I mean, a, a rise in sea level of 100 um, centimeter, uh, one meter in a century. That happened as a maximum rate when uh, ice melted after the last ice age. And this is something which we never ever in pres present time can uh, come back to. We are just a fraction of such melting rates and masses of ice. So this is a model. So like these people in that village, they observe through the, I mean, they have a memory, at least for a generation or so, seeing that, no, no, sea level is not in any alarming rise. And so I can say, because I have documented this for so many places all over the world, there is no uh, dangerous rise in sea level. It varies a little over the globe. In the Indian Ocean, it's almost zero. In uh, Venice, it, we can use Venice as a test area because we have a sea level record of three, 300 years. And it, it's not going up at all, uh, the sea the sea. Of course, the land is sinking, but that's another thing. It uh, is due to the delta sedimentation uh, loading. When we go to uh, like Amsterdam, Amsterdam was the first tide gauge in the world from 1682. If we use that record, we can calculate that uh, at the very most in the uh, North Sea area, um, sea is rising at about uh, 10 to 11 or 9 to 11 millimeter uh, per year, which is means 10 centimeter in a uh, in a century. But that's nothing. 
So those people in this village don't know, need to worry at all because that is observational facts. And this is really observation which must guide what we are doing and not models because models can go anywhere and those models here are completely in the air. So yes, I would uh, no doubt that I would support them even at the court case. So well, they that's, are, re that's really good to know, Niels, and maybe your evidence can be given. Maybe we can get this information to the people of Fairborn. But for yes. people out there who argue against what you're saying, they say, well, the science is settled. 97% of experts agree. <laughs> can we just deal with that one very quickly? Yeah, science is settled. First of all, science is never settled. But it's a very great difference if model predictions say something and if observational fact over hundreds of years say something different what should we put our trust to of course observation the things which we can take in our hands which we can go back to because those other things which are models they have an agenda they want sea level to rise and therefore they make it to rise and this is not science then we are back what we talked about previously about religion that they are think they are allowed to do these uh, sometimes even falsifications. And this is a hard, strong word, scientific falsification. It's very, very strong. But they do this in order to, to uh, pretend that it is like, uh, in, like they are claiming. And that's why we object. That's why we have organized in uh, London on September 8 and 9, a conference on uh, um, climate change, uh, science and geoethics, the ethics of this. And well, yes, the title of this story is New Dawn of Truth, because we need a new dawn of truth. That's absolutely correct, Niels, and there's some very heavyweight speakers there and real experts. Now, the public won't really have heard about this because they're never given the other side of the story. This came to light with this debate between Brian Cox and Malcolm Roberts. Brian Cox was given a huge amount of airtime to push this uh, the global warming and, um, and basically producing a graph which relies on what you could say is scientific fraud. I've done a little show with this on um, Windows on the World with Piers Corbin. But can we sort of go into this as, as to what it's really about? It, it is a new religion, but it's also um, UN global policy of taxation. And that's what it's really about. It's about control and taxation. And yes. this is something which is getting out there, but not quite enough. And when we've got all of the mainstream media basically behind this huge lie, it's very, very difficult. So as, as far as the, um, the UN and the IPCC go, can you just give us a very quick rundown of, of how things started to go wrong in these predictions that they were making, which basically co-opted the whole of the environmental movement? Oh, it's a long story, and maybe we shouldn't take it all. No. But when the international um, uh, uh, IPCC, International Panel of Climate Change, was initiated, it started, as a matter of fact, as a, po uh, as a political agenda. For, even from Sweden, we had a uh, meteorologist, Bolin, which said, said, had this idea that uh, uh, carbon dioxide, uh, temperature, and... Um, melting of ice, they had something to do with this, with each other. And his best friend, which he played tennis with twice a week, was Olof Palmer, our prime minister. And Olof Palmer was a very um, strong person, a very autocratic, in a say, but autocratic, but in a democratic way in some way. Okay. So he forced this idea of an inter international panel of uh, intergovernmental, I mean, above the, uh, the level of the countries, uh, in order to, to not to have scientific debate, but a political debate. And uh, when this came, the m meaning with that project was to, sh to show and demonstrate the so-called anthropogenic 
um, effect on climate. So they began by imposing the answer. And uh, uh, that's where it all started to, uh, to go wrong. I mean, in science, you, you shouldn't start with the answer. I mean, you begin a project and it can go in any direction. And the only thing which tells you where it is going are facts. Facts and facts and facts. And computer models, they are just tuned to give the answer which they wanted. So that's where it went wrong. And then it came with a whole uh, against um, uh, fossil fuels and uh, uh, for a new way of, uh, uh, of economy, which in many cases is to sustain the old, let us say, uh, colonial uh, uh, colonialism. I mean, we should the, the developing country should develop it under our control, or we shouldn't lose too much. It's it, um, it's, it's not good for the developing countries. But what is um, what is worse is, of course, for me as a geologist, we saw the, uh, no, saw we read about the t terrible earthquake a few days ago in Italy. This is the real Earth, the real Earth. It's, it's tremendous forces which are imposed on us and po give t very. Terrible things happen in first tsunamis, uh, nuclear power plants which breaks down, and uh, earthquakes, water dams, uh, water floodings, and all these things. And with this idea about the uh, carbon dioxide driven global warming, all the light is going to carbon dioxide. And we miss all this real earth. So when I go in, in, um, um, in the field and we see this evidence of this tremendous force, I, I feel it also. It's terrible against the truth of earth to claim that carbon dioxide have th this disastrous effect because it doesn't have. The changes in climate is uh, to absolutely predominantly driven by natural processes and um, uh, in the first range, of course, solar changes. Carbon dioxide is, uh, if it has any, if it has any effect, its maximum effect in 100 years could be 0.3 degree, plus and minus 0.1. So that's nothing. So the other thing that we sh should not be uh, ab above 1.5 degree or 1.0 or 2.0 degree, then we cannot do absolutely. We don't need to do anything. I mean, um, the nature takes care about these things, and very important in that the solar changes on the longer term. They have gone to colder phases for dec decadal changes. We are now facing in 2030, 40, 50, at that time span, a new cooling period. So it's not warming. So, so all there's so many things which gets wrong. And so man, man, what we are doing, we are natural resource, economy, all, all our planning, this is like the Fairburn, this totally stupid planning. All this is going in the wrong direction for absolutely the wrong uh, reason. And therefore, it seems interesting for you, all people in uh, Great Britain, because you did something very recently, and that was Brexit. You left um, the European Union. And now in climatology, we are doing some, we are talking about something similar, Clexit. I mean, climate exit, Clexit. And uh, this is just to leave the agenda and the decision of the Paris uh, decision uh, to, in, in December 2015. Because that decision is not founded on scientific reality. It's founded on weird ideas in order what they want to achieve. I don't know, but it's completely uh, unscientific. And in order to more massive way cope with this. We have this London conference where we should present our scientific data and then have it first we present it quite strongly. And then we have a general debate and that generally should be with respect.
because people can have different uh, opinions. We should always respect things, except, except, but not those people with fiddle with the data. The fiddling with data, I have no respect for. Then we pull out our uh, the sword of truth and puff, puff, be allowed to do it. But for other people, having just different way of interpreting things, that's, then we need a debate. But we, if we don't have a debate, there is no way forward. This is the only thing which saves our world, our science, our ideas, an open debate with respect. But exactly. not with respect to feeling. Yes, and yeah. we'll, we'll be putting those links up to the conference uh, to Clexit.net and also geoethic.com. Um, now, this does go into a wider agenda, which we haven't got time to discuss today, but it's all under United Nations Agenda 2030, which was previously Agenda 21. And a lot of what we're seeing in our towns and cities in the UK and around the world is due to these so-called green policies. Now, you can find plenty about that on winnersontheworld.net and there's plenty about it on the internet. But getting back to this village of Fairbourne, this could be a very, very interesting case. A barrister from Grey's Inn Square Chambers in London specialising in the fields of planning and local government law has reviewed the situation and concludes that there could be a potential claim here. He said we could be looking at a substantial return, tens of millions, but perhaps even a hundred million. Now this is on the back of all the property there being basically devalued and people trying to sell up and panic. I personally believe this is part of a wider agenda called the Wildlands Programme, which is about depopulation, depopulation of countryside and getting people into towns, because this is actually in the Snowdonia National Park. And it's a very sort of, it's got a huge amount of um, greenery and open land around it, this village, if you look at its situation. So I think it's part of that agenda. So if this can be fought, it's going to be a very, very interesting case. So if the people of Fairbourne get to hear this. Would you be willing to speak on their behalf, Niels, as you have done today? Oh, yes, for sure. For sure, even at court. And uh, I would also invite a little delegation to our meeting in, uh, in London. Please come. There is a lot of things we can say both openly uh, during the meeting and uh, together uh, during the breaks. Welcome. And... Uh, uh, good luck for the future, because I uh, uh, must say one final thing. For us, which have another different uh, opinion about carbon dioxide, why do, our, do we drive this? We drive it for two reasons. We are also, I'm a deep environmentalist. I love nature, and I would protect it by, in, by all means. But doing this, we have to have honesty. We have, have to have truth. And if observational fact must be above very strange sometimes even stupid sometimes even uh, purposely done miscalculation by computers so sorry this is my views but it's based on science the science science always seek new things always seek things but it has always to try to base it on what we can see as the best evidence and best evidence must be observations best evidence can never ever be uh, computer models no that's absolutely right and we we covered this in our last interview which i'm going to link to this one you can find that on youtube and it's called climate change a new religion with Niels axel morner we went into that quite deeply and what that's really about and how it's being promoted um, but this is just a short interview today. So, Niels, can you just tell us about the London Conference? Oh, this is on the 8th and 9th uh, of September. First day we will have uh, discussed the natural uh, driving forces and show the evidence for this. And there was one where we'll explain, for example, uh, uh, the Enso Evans. How is this being driven? There are lots of very elegant papers. We will have an ending debate on natural threats versus this threats invented, invented threat of carbon dioxide. Then the second day will be on how wrong it has gone by putting all uh, the emphasis on, uh, on carbon dioxide and what that means on a global scale economically uh, 
and with respect to poverty and consideration for other people and for environment that has gone wrong there. And when with this is, or I, and there is a session on sea level, of course, also. When this is uh, finished, we have a one and a half hour general discussion. Where we should, and then instead of putting all the hard evidence, we go to open minded, respectful discussion. And we respect everything which is a different opinion. We don't respect those who fiddle with the data. Uh, in order to achieve something which they can claim one meter sea level or half a meter sea level, when the real uh, the real world say just a few decimeters at the most, so Fairborn could rest very peace uh, in peace and don't worry about about uh, any change. But come to us and listen if you are uh, available. Well, that's that's I, great, Niels, yes, because what we're not getting from the mainstream media is any kind of balance. They're all bought into this agenda and they seem to use every dirty trick in the book against people who speak out against it. And this is because we're talking about global governance here. But that's great, Niels. Thanks for being on Windows on the World and we'll catch up with you very soon. Thank you. You are welcome.